Good morning. So it is Sunday morning. Uh, these sunflowers, man, they're just holding on. I mean, they are dead. It was, it was minus four again this morning, but they, uh, <laughs> they're taking their sweet time of dying. <clears throat> Unfortunately, they never made any seeds. One kind of started to, but I don't know what it would have taken. Those could just be decoration style sunflowers too and not like a commercial one that makes seeds so that could be the reason uh it is cold it's wet still there's a puddle over there from the snow melting and stuff uh i don't know if a guy would be wise to go to the field today or tomorrow and it is thanksgiving up here in canada anyways so we're not going to we're not going to today or tomorrow uh <clears throat> we when we finished uh, it's been a, i think it's been a week or so since i put up a video but as soon as we finished combining, we got right into uh, into the fall tillage. So there's been, uh, what do you call, like a, a wave of, of fear come across egg that every single thing we ever consider buying is going to go up in price. Seed, fertilizer, chemical, machine, parts, uh, fuel, everything. So nobody knows what to do and it, it's unfortunate and you know i was not trying to complain or anything this is the way it is so grain prices were up last year uh i did a video on that on how a lot of farmers actually didn't even benefit from that and it's because of our messed up marketing system where in order to sell grain today so what is it october 10th if you wanted to haul grain october 10th you would have had to sign a contract like last january or february to get a delivery date today so <clears throat> So last year, the, the grain was sold the prior winter to that year even, so they could deliver it, you know, to get the cash flow to pay the bills. And uh, oftentimes, the the price, you know, the year before is, you know, it's last year's price, right? So they didn't they didn't realize the uh, <clears throat> the benefits from those high grain prices. So this year, it looks like the farmers are going to because the prices stayed up. So if you signed a contract last January to deliver now, the price was high. So people have, uh, you know, they are realizing the price, but <laughs> everything else has gone up crazy. So, and we're talking like 30, 30%, you know, uh, I, 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 and I, I don't know all this cause I haven't, we haven't looked into pricing any of this yet. We will, after the holiday weekend here, we'll start to look at pricing and actually taking some delivery of this stuff because the world's got everybody confused. Like the shelves are empty, not just for toys, not just for Christmas presents, but they're empty for everything. They're empty for groceries. They're empty for, uh, uh, seeds and chemicals and fertilizers stuff that people need for industry i mean everything's hard to get you know we were even you know these these mini bulk bags so we ordered a thousand with our logo on them and everything and actually it looks like this time when we go to restock when we go to get another thousand we're just going to get the plain ones because uh delivery on those was six to eight months and i think it took eight months and now the price of those has just gone way up uh and and delivery will be 10 months so we may as well just try to find if we can find a comparable size of something in stock in western canada and just and just use that uh it's crazy it's it's totally crazy it, it adds a level of confusion that you wouldn't think you know that would happen really in the 21st century with uh you know we were supposed to have this all figured out and uh you know now we're kind of realizing we've been we've been bs'd a little bit so uh i don't know where i was going with all that it's crazy crazy times um what I got to do though, I made a couple bags. I, I, I've been just totally busy making bags. That's why I haven't put out a video. I did finally get semi caught up, I guess. I, I don't think I'm going to fire up the mill today. Uh, it is it is a holiday. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Today we're going to go have supper. Um, so I'm just going to do the chores that I have to do. I got to go look at one more water up there and change the valve in it. And then uh, the guy's here right now. I got to load him. And then... Uh, take my feed that I made for my steers take that up so that's all what's going to happen here today also the other day we picked up a couple more little pickies because uh we had uh no. so these the big ones are the ones we got whenever I don't know two months ago or whatever it was these little ones me and buddy we just picked up uh two days ago uh and that's because <coughs> When people found out that we had bigs, they were like, oh, okay, we'll take them all. And we thought five would be enough, but they're all spoken for. So we had to get some more. Also yesterday, 
I had to come up and fix these waters. This is the same as the cattle waters that we have over there, the above ground ones. We just dug this one down into the ground so the pigs can access it a little better. Uh, <clears throat> they're just the same as anything else. There's a heating element on the bottom of it. There's a thermostat down in there to control the heat. Uh, and then there's a float in there. So there used to be underground power over here. That's what some of these are. But because Corey and I, and even my dad, we didn't know exactly how it was all set up. Uh, and see, there's, and there's power over to that one over there too, where that pylon is. Uh, we, so we didn't know, and I, I just cut it for here. So the underground power only goes to those waters down there. And then, uh, then where does it go? Okay, so yeah, then we, we put up this pole and we ran it from that lean-to shed over behind this little barn to this pole back here. And now there's power to this shed. I put a bigger fuse, a bigger breaker panel in the shed. And then I'm for the winter, this winter, I'm just gonna run along this freestanding panel, uh, extension cord to here. And then this, uh, this was supposed to be stronger, but anyways, this will keep it up out of the piggy's way. And then uh, this will have power and it'll be warm and it'll be on all winter. We weren't planning on keeping any animals over the winter. However, I think we might because even with the hay shortage, we don't have very many animals. So we got some extra hay actually from the neighbors. And uh, instead of letting it go to waste, we might look for a few more, a few more critters to keep because we're going to have all this heated waters we got this little shelter here we got this little pen here that we made uh there's, there's lots and it's kind of a waste not to uh not to run animals here if you have all the infrastructure already all right so we got the critters fed and uh not gonna have a whole bunch of projects today because we do got to go for thanksgiving supper and it is already two o'clock 1 30 i guess but i got a question so there's not a whole bunch of people watch these videos but on the off chance that there is some sort of a power line guy that watches, how do you guys string them so tight? Like you look at the highway or whatever, you can't see one from here, but holy cow, like that's hard to do. What I did, of course, because it's totally crazy and irresponsible, I lifted the loader up on the other side of that pole, put a ratchet strap on it, wrapped it around the line and just started ratchet strapping it until I could get it. Cause this line, uh, if you'll remember from some of the other videos, had a huge sag in it. Part of the problem was where we backfilled all this dirt, that hole filled up with water, turned basically into soup, and this pole went that way towards that other pole, so it just gradually got worse and worse. And you could actually touch it from the ground. Now it's probably, I don't know, 12 feet, 15 feet, so not too bad. It'll work for us, and uh, nobody drives in here anyways. But to get this tight and then to get it to stay, that's unbelievable. So I don't know how those guys do it on the highway.